Good evening all, I Rapstein and here we are with your metal market wrap up and this wrap up is for Monday evening and this is uh, October 24th, 2022, 6.57 p.m. Central Time is I'll get ready to watch the Bears probably get beaten tonight when I finish this and do some of my reviews. What can you do? Wish they were a little better. But football's football and it's fun. Chicago is 78 degrees right now, by the way, today. I mean, it's unbelievably warm. We should be in the 50s and 60s and dropping. I'm sure it's going to change very quickly. When you look, you can see the energy market still holding. Uh, no surprise there. I'm thinking that the 530 level in that zone in the December natural gas, the lows that I believe you made today, probably near the low of the market. I'm looking for heating oil to start perking up. We're not far away from when the cold weather is going to become the norm. So I watch all that. When you look at the markets, you had a strong stock market today, but I expected that. Uh, for those of you that get the morning videos from me, my subscriber video, I was not surprised. I was looking for Bollinger Bands and 18-day averages to be hit on the upside. It's a Monday. You had a strong Monday, often a strong Monday. If you fo follow the Stock Traders Almanac by Yale Hirsch, you get Tuesday reversals. Doesn't mean you have to, but it's one of the percentage plays. You pay attention to those. In the currency markets, they're gonna be difficult now. So you got the Bank of Canada Wednesday, you've got the European Central Bank coming out Thursday. These are their monetary policy statements. What are they gonna do with interest rates? We come out next week on the second, the Bank of England, and then a host of other banks all the way through. So this is where the data starts coming in. You get your PCE data, if I'm correct, this Friday. So watch that. Now, you're going to get a different look to some of these videos in a day or two. Why? Because I'm going out of town. But I've decided that when out of town, as long as I'm around my computer, and I'm not going to be there every night, but when I am, I'm going to knock these videos off. I may not be in them. You saw when I went to California last time how I did it. I'll probably do it again. And for my subscribers, I'll probably have most of those videos out. I may not do twice daily written updates. It is a vacation that I'm taking. I'll be gone for a few days. Let's leave it at that. And headed out west. So it should be a lot of fun. Okay, when I look at the gold market, here we are with the market still sitting under the 18-week uh, average of closes. The bias is down. You haven't really bounced very much from the market. You're down 2.3% starting the week off. When you look at the gold here, okay, I, I still don't see anything to get excited about. That's the problem on the chart. You can look at it and say you got a lower low and a higher high. So what the market effectively did is the market was able, to, uh, I didn't want to do that. Let's see if I can get this back. Yeah, I can. So what the market effectively did is right here. The market broke this pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You see that? And by getting up and over that high, you've stepped out of that downtrend. That does not mean you're in an uptrend. It's the effective end of that wave to the downside. And now you have to see what the market is capable of doing. When we come over to where the market's having the problem, I'm, I'm so surprised. You hear me say this all the time, the line in the sand. When the market is over that 18 day average, it's not uncanny for it to fall back and figure out what to do next. Under it, it likes to go back up there. Please go on your charts, surprise yourself. I think you're going to walk away go, where did he come up with that? that? That seems to be what the market does. It's because I've been doing it for 53 years now, and I was trained by other people, and I've been training people in my life to do it like you. So you come, I'm looking at the resistance right there. Where did the market try to bottom? Are you surprised? The Bollinger Band, come on. What I teach in my enhanced Bollinger Band course on our website is that the odds favor 95% of the time, the first challenge of a Bollinger Band upside or downside is often where pros take out the money. Does it always work? No. Does it mean it's going to be a reversal to the downside? No, because you got to tie into it what the Bollinger Bands are doing. And if they're embedding like they're doing here, instead of pulling back, it becomes buying opportunities because you're going higher. If they're not embedded, it gives you a different story. You've got to learn how to work with it. And that's what I teach in the course. 
Again, I'm going to repeat, just because I teach it doesn't mean it works every single time. I know of nothing other than death and taxes in America that works every single time for most of us. I'm sure there's a few out there, vampires, that have been around a long time. When I look at how the market is going in the gold-silver ratio, you're back under the 18 day average, which means silver should be theoretically stronger than gold. And if you look at the chart, it most certainly has been. The market has got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but it's fighting at a key number. It's at the 18 day average. It's got the 100 just above it. It is correcting an oversold condition. It's certainly not a short sale, but it's not a buy either. In the copper market, you're narrowing into all that Notice how you're tightening in these Bollinger Bands. Now, it's interesting. Cadelco out of Chile. I read an article today where instead of getting the normal contracts, their buyers, the people that buy from them, want to take out three to five year contracts. They want to be guaranteed a certain amount of tonnage, if you will, out of it. And that is because the world realizes that in this electrified world where all the cars, if you will, they're going electric, China's so far ahead of America in charging stations, for an example. You can't believe it. I wrote about that this morning, how many they have to Europe and Europe to America. We are the odd guys out, no question about that. But it all takes a lot of copper. And copper is used by China. They're the biggest consumer in the world. Their Shanghai stocks are depleted like this, just about nothing. The reason, in part, is because of their COVID situation and the U.S. not being favorable to financing them anymore completely. The big banks have stepped back. In addition, there were scandals about what was in the Shanghai copper warehouses. Some people were taking that and loaning it out three times. So you're putting it up as collateral, if you will, as three times. Not loaning it, but putting it up as collateral to get money. And then when it, something didn't go right, they all realized they didn't have any asset left at all. So plenty going on, plus the LME exchange is really very close to considering what are they going to do with Russia? What if they won't take Russian metal? Gets to be another craziness. What would you have done today if for the first time you got up and you watch Ira all the time? I hope you watch me all the time. I'm a nice guy. And this is how you are coming in and you're looking at the market. What number would I be telling you, hey, if you hit that number, as far as I'm concerned, that's where the pros are coming out of the market. Lo and behold, it goes to the number, and that's where you're at. Come on. This is easy to learn. That's what I'm telling you. And I reinforce it every single morning in my subscriber videos. Not these videos, my subscriber videos. I go over it step by step with everybody. The Palladium's in a different ball game. It's having a lot of trouble because it got under the 100-day average. So between the lower Bollinger Band and that number, being the resistance now is the battleground. If it can clear where the arrow is, then I think you open up the door for the 18-day average. But it's not a buy regardless because it's under that average. What about embedding? You're just about there. Both numbers were under, as you can see, 20 right here. If we go back another day, both numbers were under 20 and both numbers under 20. So Thursday, Friday, Monday, you're embedded. What are the pros going to do? On the rallies, they're going to keep selling until that red line closes, in my opinion, over 21, looking for the lower Bollinger Band. They haven't changed their, their tactic. And the dollar has turned down. That's not a bad thing. Nothing can go up forever. It didn't get through those highs. It's now got to play around if, just if, the Fed is talking about lowering or not going as far as you might think with interest rates and other banks have to go up, well, that differential might actually make the dollar come down a bit, put the euro up, put the pound up. The yen, no. The yen has to change its position. I did a piece for the Mercantile Exchange on Bloomberg, and I explained that they, they threw $100 billion, the Japanese, last week to try to stabilize the yen. They'd have been better off sending all of us some money. Just write us a check. Why? If you keep a loose money policy and you think you can stabilize the market by doing that, it's a waste of your money. All you can do is slow down the inevitable. Now, it's not inevitable if they change the money policy, but they're not. They want to make sure that inflation, which they have for decades, 
try to get to lock in will stay locked in. 3% isn't doing the number for them just yet. Let's see what happens. But you'll see. And that's what I say. Until they announce the change of policy, they can throw all the foreign exchange they want at the market. All they'll have is brief periods where they support it a bit. They don't change the direction of the market. Can't do it if your monetary policy doesn't change. And I talk about all this for you each morning. So at approximately 5.30 a.m. Central Time, I've already looked at what's going on in Europe, Asia, back to America. I'm talking to you about the reports over the weekend. If it was a weekend, you've had your weekend video where we've done all the weekly charts for the bigger chart pictures. And now we're into the dailies, which are more of the, uh, they're not day trade, they're more of the swing trade type. Why? Because in futures, you got 90% leverage. Come on. It's not 50% like in the stock market, it's 90. The markets go a lot faster up and down than the stock market does in bigger ways. Just accept that that's it. I don't care if you like to trade that way, you can't get away from that unless you put up all cash for the futures contract and then just sit. You'd be by yourself, just about nobody does that. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I, I've been, I've owned brokerage firms since 84 and uh, I, I never saw clients put all the cash in and trade a contract with all the cash in there for that one contract. It's a pretty strong statement to make. Haven't seen it. Doesn't mean it didn't happen, I, I just didn't see it. When you look at where we're at here in order to get this, go to our website, go under the word research, it's logical, that's where it would be. Study it, give it a try. I think you'll like what you see. I'm Ira Epstein, see you tomorrow.